Morning, Jack. Morning. Oh, let me guess. Hotcakes and sausage? No, it'll be eggs benedict with champagne, please. <laughs> you clown. He's still got that bug. You can't blame him, Jack. It was his bust. What the hell? You should have been sitting out there in the middle of the night watching that driveway. Who knows? No one is going to unload a truck of marijuana in broad daylight. You can't work 24 hours. Well, then what's his problem? I worked my own leads. I kept the driveway under surveillance. And when the deal went down, I made the bust. Some coffee? Yeah, yeah I have some coffee. I'll have it over in the booth with Detective Barry. Okay. Please. That ain't the point, man. I mean, sometimes you make other cops look like they ain't doing Excellent. their jobs. If I were a politician, I would have taken this uniform off a long time ago. And nobody's asking you to be anything. Just lighten up. Do me a favor. Tell him I'm sorry. Tell them I'll be right there, Dad. Um, Dad, listen, could I borrow ten bucks? Well, how about five? Dad, come on, there's this Marla girl drove Jesse all the way from Markleyville. At least I could do is buy him some food, you know? You mean beer? Yeah, some of each. Yeah. Thanks. Have a good time. Yeah, we will. Hey, sweet thing. Hey. How are you? Good. Good, good. Mm -hmm. This is Marla. Hi, nice to meet you. Listen, I, I uh, really appreciate you bringing Jesse all the way down here. No, nothing to it. Hop in. Let's get the show on the road. Okay. taking her so long. She's got a lot of stuff to pack. Yeah, well, I remember when I got out of this place, I didn't stop long enough to pack my toothbrush. <laughs> yeah, well, girls are different. So how late can you guys stay? Um, we should leave at least by 9. My dad will pitch a fit. I don't know by 10. <laughs> oh, Jesse, here, let me get that. Oh, is this it? Yeah, it's all I'm taking. I got most of it when my aunt came to get me last oh. week. The rest I'm just giving away. Was it weird going back in there? No. Not really. Maybe because I knew it was the last time. Yeah, last time for both of us. Hey, you should get a move on. Oh, jeez. Where'd you get this character? <laughs> How about that place for beer? No, no, you know what? We know a better place. Why won't they sell to you? Well, it's not that. <clears throat> Paul had a major beef with the owner when we were living here. Just best we go someplace else. OK. You two are like a couple of Siamese twins joining the lips. Hey, he never wants to quit. Oh, I never want to quit. I never want to quit. Who was the one who was always sneaking over to the boys' dorm at the home in the middle of the night, huh? Huh? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, can, can Paul come out and play, please? I, I do miss him so. <laughs> you don't. Stop. I'll get you. I'll get you. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're all right. How you doing, Spike? Oh, pretty good. 
Good. Just hanging around. Hey, y'all want some weed? No, no, that's all right. We, we got beer. That's enough for now. Oh, come on, man. Let's go for a ride. Do some smoke. <laughs> Found the body. A couple of fishermen headed down to the river. That's my first body. Won't be your last. How much did they touch before we got here? Nothing, they say. Good show. Thank you. You better string out some tape. We're gonna need some illumination. Hey, whose case is this, anyhow? Don't know yet. Sheriff Hall's on his way out, though. Thanks. He wasn't killed here. How can you tell? The mortis, the blood on the neck. He was moved here. He died someplace else. But what do we do now? We better get some lanterns. It's going to be a long night. Any idea on this boy? No. But his name's Paul Anderson. Well, at least I think so. Uh, dispatcher gave me this when I came on duty. Father reported him missing last night. Looks like him, right? Father said he left with a couple of girls. You better spread out and search the entire area. There might be two more bodies. Jack? Did this make it an official county case? I don't know yet. You said on the radio you found two more bodies. Boy, two girls, just kids. Sheriff, this is the worst case I've ever seen. 
Where are they? I don't know. The boy's, the boy's not much older than my own son. You all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. The killer must have been proud of his work. How do you figure that? Well, he left, uh, he left the boy out in plain sight. The, uh, the killers probably wanted it to be found. The killers? Yeah, it had to be uh, had to be more than one. I mean, you got three kids. Someone would have to control them. Jesus. What do you got, partner? Triple homicide. Jack thinks they were killed somewhere else, and then put here. What makes you think I give a big rat's ass what Jack thinks? It's a city case now, Sheriff. Thanks for coming out. Sure, no problem. You need anything? You give me a call. Thanks, Sheriff. I'll see you later. Don't do that. I'm just trying to give her some decency. I know, but the lab's going to have a tough enough time without sorting through some damn fibers off a blanket. Just, just leave her uncovered. We'll take it from here, Jack. I thought I told you people to get behind the lines. Now do it! Stay there! I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, could you, could you say that again, please? Yeah, uh, he had a, a tattoo on the inside of his left arm, and it was an eagle with its wings spread. And that was also the hand that he was, he was holding the knife with. Um, <clears throat> and you say that you, you saw this, this vision before the murders actually occurred. You, you don't believe anything I've been telling you, do you? 
psychics have solved murders before. Listen, I am not a psychic, and I'm not a psycho, okay? I've never experienced anything like this before in my entire life. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, I, I, I called the police department the, the day that this happened, and uh, there, there should be a report there. I'll, I'll look into that. Yeah, thanks. Let's go. There is no use talking to this guy. Kimberly Miranda. You got a minute, Chief? Yeah, sure, Jack. Come on in. How's the uh, Oxbow Woods case coming? Oh, you talk to Ryan more than I do. Why don't you ask him? It's kind of touchy about it. Uh -huh. Jack, I got a ton of stuff here. What can I do for you? Thought you might put me on the case. I think I could help out. Help out? Yeah, you know, footwork, run down some leads, that sort of thing. You got too many cases as it is, Jack. Let's face it, it's only been four days since these murders. It's been five, Chief. Five? You got a problem with the way this case is being handled, Jack. No. Well, I just thought I could help out. Why are you letting this one get to you this much? You weren't out there, Chief. You didn't see how they left those kids butchered in the woods. Thank you. No, no, no. We'll, we'll get back to you. Uh-huh. Thank you. What about drugs? Who? Jesse? Yeah. No way. Jesse wasn't into drugs. Neither was Paul. How's it going? Thanks. You can go. I've interviewed every teenager in this city the past few days. It all adds up to zip. Might be you fellas could use a little help. <laughs> Why don't you just give him all my cases? That way I can just take off and go fishing. Now, don't get so bent out of shape. He can help you with the legwork. Scare up a suspect for you. No, thanks. Matter of fact, we're closing in on a real good suspect. Ernie Anderson, dead boy's father. my respects. So, he's your big suspect, huh? Oh, well, maybe Barry reached a little yesterday, but... Yeah, we're giving him a hard look. Take a hard look now. Yeah, well, he and a kid, they fought like cats and dogs. Scott. That's what teenagers do. They fight with their parents. Yeah, but they don't put him in the St. Charles Youth Center like he did. From what the records say, he can control the kid after he and his wife are divorced. So he wanted to kill his kid, but he waited until the two girls were around. Jack, can I get you to talk about anything else anymore other than this case? Scott, I just want to help. I know. What is it? Look at that girl standing right next to the preacher. Yeah. She looks a lot like one of the dead girls. Could be a sister. She didn't have a sister. Yeah, you're right. 
Yeah, they do look a lot alike. I gotta get out of here. Where are you going? I'm meeting Barry at the crime scene. We're gonna see if we can pick up on something we missed before. You're missing the real crime scene. Jack, you're doing it again. Doing what? Being a pain in the butt. Look, take a look across the river. Now, it's just a hunch, but I heard some teenagers talking at the station. They said that Paul and Jesse used to go over there and do, I guess, whatever teenagers do. Chicken for you in the ice box. Thanks. I stopped by the park. Went to the other side of the river. Those kids were killed. What'd you hope to find over there? I don't know. Something. Anything. It's so frustrating. It's been three weeks since those kids were killed. No one seems to care anymore. Not Scott. Not anyone. What is it, sweetheart? Why are these kids' deaths getting to you like this? They were children. Not much older than our own. And you didn't see the way they were killed. They were hurt. No one deserves to die like that. So what are you going to do now? I don't know. Whatever it takes, I guess. I love you, old man. You know, the best part of the day is coming home to you, kid. Just coffee, please. Don't you ever sleep? It's your day off. Sometimes, but I knew you'd be here. <laughs> Any new leads? Yeah. Yeah. Some drunk called last night. Said aliens killed those kids. He's seen it. Aliens. I told the guy I'd, I'd add aliens to the list of suspects, right along with fits in with Bigfoot reports, the biker named Spike, psychic visions. You've actually got a list of suspects? I'm impressed, man. Doing again, Jack. You're not the only cop in this town who knows how to run a case. Oh, what's the matter? Are we losing our sense of humor? You forget I work with Barry all day? <laughs> this Wanda Monroe. Is she the woman that owns that uh, store out by the youth center? Yeah. Why is she a suspect? Some of the kids we interviewed said that she had it, had it out for. Anderson, so I don't accuse him of shoplifting or something, so we put her name on the list. She's about as suspect as old Bigfoot. You mind if I uh, follow through on a couple of these for you? You know, just to help out, Jack. Don't give me any grief, please. Okay. I just clear it with the chief.
Is that any way to greet your old ex-partner? Boy, you'll never change, would you? Come on in here. <laughs> How you doing, Willie? Ah, uh, just taking life easy, trying to pay the rent, babe. You don't miss it, huh? <laughs> the action, the streets. <laughs> 23 years on the department, 15 of them with you is enough. So, uh, what brings you out here, Jack? Hmm? Came out to visit my old partner, that's all. Come on, Jack. Hey, Willie. You got a lot of machines out there in the west side. You got any of them near the St. Charles Youth Center? You mean over there where those kids are? Now, you know I got three video machines over there, and they're all doing good, too. How about that woman that owns this store? Wonder? <laughs> now, you're not going to tell me that she's been dealing nickelbacks. No. Nope. <laughs> But her name did come up in a murder investigation. The one that went down at Oxbow Park. Really? Well, I heard about that. Real bad. Real bad. You working that case? No, I'm just trying to help out. Now, this is not another one of your little personal investigations, is it, Jack? Really? Some things never change. <laughs> no, I'm just following up. A kid said that Wanda threatened the boy that was murdered. Oh, Wanda just liked to give those boys a hard time because she thinks they hang out in the parking lot and they cut down all business. I mean, she's more of a lover than a fighter. And from what I hear, Jack, she can keep you busy all night long. <laughs> That's what you hear, huh? When are you scheduled to go out there and check those machines again? Well, I wasn't planning on going out there till Monday. Monday? Mm-hmm. Uh... I gotta work on Monday. I was kind of hoping I could, you know, sort of tag along, but not on Monday. You will never change, Jack. You're a con artist, baby. <laughs> right. What's she doing? I wanted to, like, tease the young studs, get them all hot and bothered. And then she'll send them home. That's just a game she plays. It looks like she plays it pretty well. Oh, yeah, but she ain't stupid. She got a pretty good head on her shoulder. In fact, she owns this place and a couple more places around town. She married? No. Damn! What is it? Another busted lock. Hey, Wanda. Hey, Willie. I thought you weren't doing next week. Sweetheart, you got a busted lock back there. I know. I was going to call you about that. Has Spike been back here with that screwdriver of his? No, it's those boys from the home, you know? Got to watch them all the time. Oh, I'm sorry. Wanda Monroe, Jack Stewart, Jack and I used to be cops back together. Pleasure. Likewise. You working or playing? A little of both. When I retire from the police department, I'm thinking about going into business for myself and my old partner, he showed me the ropes. Well, if you want to make some real money, you ought to be talking to me. I'm always looking for new partners. That's an interesting proposition. I'll think about it, Wanda. Sorry about the lock, Willie. Got some inventory in the back. Nice to have met you, Jack. Nice meeting you. And whenever you're ready, you just give me a call. You see what I mean, boy? That is enough to drive a man wild. I get your point. Boy, that Wanda. Look! Now, are you serious about getting into this business? You've been retired too long. Spike. Now, I heard that name Spike before. Uh-huh. Spike is just your average, everyday lowlife who hung around here sometime. In fact, he had a girlfriend that worked here. Lindsay Thomas? No. This girl was named Stephanie. Is that what I think it is? I was leaving a note on your desk when I noticed this. Notice what? 
Why didn't you tell me you suspended the case? We supposed to make daily reports to you now, Stuart? No, you're supposed to make daily reports to me. Chief, we've had eight weeks of crazy calls, interviews, and no major progress, so we suspended the case. It's not like we've quit. That's right, and we've got a lot of other cases eating us alive. Chief, let me have this case. You stay out of this, Jack. Now, I don't want you closing out murder cases without clearing it with me first. Chief? I told you to butt out. Chief, please. There. You want it, you got it. Chief said I was assigned to the part murder case with you. Yeah. I asked for you. There's your desk. I haven't had a lot of experience working homicides, sir. And also, you haven't learned to dislike me yet. And that's a plus. Here's a list of people that weren't asked enough questions by the detectives, or were never asked any questions at all. There's a lot of names here, sir. Do me a favor, will you? My name's Jack, don't call me, sir. And you get paid by the week, son, not by the number of names on that sheet of paper. Yes, sir. Jack? Jack. Jack, I thought the other guys had the father of the boy as a suspect. Now, he was their suspect, but he's not mine. Now, when a case like this gets put on the back burner, there's a reason. This is a very tough case, huh? And everybody screwed up, including the chief, who let Barry and Ryan sit on it while the tracks got cold. Now, we, we're going to make this case hot. Remember where the bodies were found? Yes. Right here. My instincts tell me that the killings took place over here, across the river, much closer to where one of the victim's car was found. Haven't the other detectives already searched that area? No. That's what we're going to do. After you check out that list of names I gave you. And one more thing. I want you to go to the youth center, ask around. I want to find Lindsay Thomas. According to Barry's interview with her, she knew Paul Anderson. And the fact that she resembles one of the victims, Jesse Sherwin, seems funny. No one has seen or heard from the Thomas girl. It's worth the shot. At the coroner's report? Yeah. 21 stab wounds. Can you imagine the kind of rage it would take to stab a 17-year-old girl 21 times? Left-handed. What? The report says the killer was using his left hand to stab them. Have I seen that before? Left hand, left hand. He was using his left hand. I gotta talk to this woman. So why, after all this time, is it so important all of a sudden? We were just assigned the case and rechecking everything. Well, um, those other cops thought I was um, some kind of a freak, you know? Ma'am, if we thought you were a freak, we wouldn't be here. Can you tell me about the left-handed man you saw in your vision? Um, he, uh, he had a scruffy beard. He was wearing a sleeveless jacket. On his left arm, there was a, a tattoo, an eagle with its wings spread. And there was another guy. Two men? You saw two men doing the stabbing? No, no. 
one man was doing the stabbing, the one with the tattoo. The other man was dark, Hispanic, Indian maybe. And he had his jeans tucked into his boots. I can, I can see that vividly. And it happened someplace in the woods. If you saw the spot again, would you recognize it? Yes. It was Mora. More. It was grass. There was more grass. There. Have you looked over there? This is the place. This is the place I saw in my dream. This is where they died. Are you, are you sure this is where the killings took place? Yes. Oh. I see two men. Maybe a third. He's smaller. It's dark. His hair's here. He's, he's standing back or something. I, I can't see him clearly. You think it was a boy? Could it have been a woman with short, dark hair? Dark. Small. I can't see him clearly. You don't believe me either, do you? No, no. I just don't have anything yet to convince anyone else. <gasps> Miss Haskell? Miss Haskell? A white bra. What about it? I see a white bra. Tied around one of the little girl's legs. That wasn't in any newspaper. No. Is it you, box in the cellar? I don't know. I... All right, Stephanie, go get me another bear. Hey. Ow! Be quick about it. Why do you treat her like that for, man? Hey, man, it makes her afraid. And I like it when they're afraid. I do what you say. Hey, you're getting awful thirsty out here. <laughs> Come here, get on your knees. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, I don't like it when you talk back to me like that. I wasn't talking back Just to you. Just shut up. Shut up. Yeah, see? Miss Stephanie? I want you to take young Jesus here back in the bedroom. Make him happy. Oh, no, Michael, I, I couldn't do that. I don't want to. Hey, what's the matter with you? It's your lady, man. I can't. What, she ain't good enough for you? I oh, ain't seeing that. I mean... Why don't you just give him a break, Spike? Can't you see he's scared? Ow! 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 Don't fight me again! I love you. I love you, too.
Work at nights again, Jack? Couldn't sleep. Thought I'd do some paperwork. Hey, there was a call that came through for you about 10 last night. Some girl was trying to reach you. Oh, yeah? She leave her name? Yeah. Lindsay Thomas. Hey, Lindsay, you just, you just take your time, okay? Um, just a little shook, so all my husband Ray just took off. It's okay, Lindsay, you just, just, uh, take all the time you want. Not long ago, I, uh, caught him, you know. Having an affair? Mm-hmm. You know those three kids that were killed? In the park? <laughs> I think I know who did it. Your husband has something to do with it? I'm not sure, Sergeant Stewart, but... I think the woman my husband has been sleeping with had something to do with it. What makes you think that? One of the girls who was killed, um, she, she used to live around here, Jesse Sherwood. Right. And we went to grade school together, and everybody said that we looked enough alike to be sisters. You do? I think whoever killed Jesse was after me. I've been getting these threatening phone calls for a long time now, ever since Ray broke it off with this other woman. And he, we tried to patch things up, but it just it didn't work. And I think he's seeing her again, and that's why he took off tonight. I'm scared, Sergeant Stewart. This woman is crazy. What's the woman's name? Her name's Wanda. Wanda Monroe. Can I help you with your bag? You're under arrest. Cup of coffee, Jack. Thanks. Anything? She understands her rights. She won't talk about anything. Uh, we can't hold her too much longer, you know, unless she can give us something we can take to a preliminary hearing. Lindsay Thomas will testify that she oh. threatened her. Now, Chief, wait a minute. There's a half a dozen other witnesses that'll testify that she threatened Paul Anderson. That is not enough, Jack. It is not enough. I'm gonna let her think about it overnight. And I'm gonna try and talk to her again tomorrow. Barry thinks we should give her a polygraph. Now, if she fails that, we're gonna have to try to convince the DA to at least file. Now, that should give us four or five extra days. What if she passes? Maybe she's innocent, Jack. Did you ever think of that? You really screwed it up now? You busted her too soon, now she's gonna walk. I'm not in the mood, Barry. You found an eyewitness? I heard his eyewitness is that psychic you talked to. You gonna put a psychic on the stand, Jack? Look, Scott, this Wanda Monroe, she's right in the middle of this thing. I, I, I can feel it in my bones. Just a few pieces missing, like the spike. What's a spike? I mean, a man's got to have a name. I think there's a guy named Spike already over in county jail. His name's Michael... Burke. His parole officer mentioned something to me about him a while back. Thanks, Scott. Jack, Roger Boyd. Roger is, uh, Michael Burke's parole officer. Yep, remember. Yeah. I've seen you. Good to see you. I'm sorry to bring you down here in the middle of the night. 
But I don't think I could have waited until tomorrow morning. Right, no problem. I'm just glad somebody's interested. I spoke to a detective a while back and told him that Michael had mentioned the Oxbow Park murders to me, but he said they already had a suspect. Well, I'm interested. Now, you guys brought him in on, what, a sexual assault, wasn't it? Yeah. Michael and his buddy Hector Martinez did a real number on a 19-year-old kid. Michael used his knife to carve a slice out of the boy's leg. What's the background on Burke? Tough guy. Heavy drinker. Legend in his own mind type. I don't think he'd actually kill somebody. You cut up a kid, but he won't kill him? Why not? Michael's a talker. He likes to brag about things he never did. And he can be real charming when he wants to. What do you think? Think you'll talk to me? No problem. Michael Burke loves to talk. Jack Stewart. Glad to meet you. In the mic. I heard a lot about you, man. I saw on TV where you arrested Wanda. <clears throat> well, you think she killed them kids? That's what she's been saying. Well, I don't know, Jack. I think she's lying. Old Wanda wouldn't kill a fly if it was eating her lunch. So what you ought to do is talk to my old lady, Stephanie. She used to work for her. And she'll tell you what. Maybe I'll do that. You got her number? Yeah, boy, honey, I wish I did, too. Um, but me and her had a beef last week, and uh, she moved in with her sister or something. Uh, God, what you ought to do, you ought to track her down and make her call me in here, and I'll tell her, tell you all you need to know about Wanda. Sir, I want to help you. Whoever did those things to those kids, they ought to die. I mean, die, Jack. The TV set was a real mess. Is that right? Ever do any drugs? Shoot up a little speed now and then, something like that? Uh uh, no. Mm -mm. I will tell you, I used to smoke a little bit, but I don't even do that no more. I'm clean. Mind if I have a look? Sure. Yep, you're clean. Yeah, I wouldn't lie to you, Jack. Jack? I'd never lie to you. Especially about something as serious as drugs. Hey, Jack, I got my cigarettes back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. Left-handed, huh? That's right. Could have pitched for the Dodgers, too. See you around, Mike. So? He's left-handed. He's got an eagle tattoo. And he's a friend of Wanda Monroe's. No. I just need a motive. This is Hector, when they brought in with Burke. Unfortunately, I'm afraid that little angel is not going to be here very long. He's already told the public defender that he'd cop a plea on the assault charge. Yeah, but right now, I've got all the rats in one cage. I'm going to pit one against the other, and one of them will give it up. And I'm putting my money on Wanda Monroe giving it up. Cut her loose, Chief. Just settle down, Jack. We had no choice. I never got a chance to talk to her. With Burke and Martinez in jail, I might have gotten her to loosen up. She passed the lie detector test. She didn't do it. 
Oh, you'd know that, huh? Master detective sitting there on your fat ass pretending you give hey. a damn about this case. You nailed the wrong one, hey, idiot. Hey, hey, Can't hey, you hey, see that? Oh, that's right. It was Paul Anderson's father. He killed three kids because they had some beef over homework or something. You jumped the gun. Now the case is blown wide open. It might take us a year to get it ready for another arrest. What do you mean, us? We got the case back, Jack. You're off. What's he saying, Chief? I just got word this afternoon after the judge ordered Monroe released that the, uh, the DA thinks you handle this rather badly, so she wants the original detectives back on it. What about me? Oh, well, it's not as if there's a shortage of crime in this city, Jack. <laughs> I get your point, Chief. Jack, nobody, I mean nobody, expects you to resign the force. You'll get over it. last night in the county jail, Michael Burke. He's the man in your vision. Oh, my. Thank you for believing me. You've helped me maintain my sanity. I just wanted you to know that what happened was real. That what you saw, whatever gave you the power to see it, that it was real. And because of it, I now know who the killers are. Well, will they be punished? I promise those kids. And I promise you, Miss Haskell. I won't rest until they are. Yes, I, I believe you. And I want to thank you very much for believing me. Thank you. Oh, hi. They called me. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm sorry. There's nothing to be sorry for. Sweetheart, you've been under so much stress, I was really starting to worry about you. You disappointed in me? I've got a lot of things in my life, Jack. But never disappointed. But I am bullheaded, huh? Oh, yeah. So, um, you have any idea what you're gonna do next? Yep. I got one, but, um, you're not gonna like it. You can't be serious. I'm serious. You'd be losing a third of your pay. I mean, you'd be on the bottom of the seniority list and you'd be stuck on the midnight shift. That's crazy, Jack. I mean, that's just nuts. I've got to be close to this guy, Burke. Now, I know this kind of a man. He can't keep his mouth shut. Besides, Sheriff, I'm unemployed. I don't suppose I have to warn you about entrapment or anything like that. I mean, you do know what that word means. You know, I know. All right. Time for breakfast, boys. Am I supposed to believe this? Believe what? That you're not a cop anymore? I'm a jailer now. Yeah. 
It won't work. You got something to hide, Michael? Hey, you know what, man? I'm gonna help you solve your case. Hey, Jake, come here. This here's Sergeant Stewart of the Carson PD. He's working undercover as a jailer, so I want you to tell him what you told me. Go ahead. Well, there's this guy named Toad that I knew in another jail. And he told me that he knew this girl in Auburn, you know. And she knows who did them park murders. Jake, you ought to report that to the PD. I'm not on that case anymore. Pretty tough one, huh? Killers did a pretty good job, huh? Except for one big mistake. That's right, they killed the wrong girl. What's he talking about? It doesn't mean anything. Except to Michael and me. Are you sure this is necessary? At least until I can sort this thing out between your husband and Wanda. Why did this have to happen, Sergeant Stewart? I feel so responsible for what happened to Jesse and the others. Lindsay, you did nothing wrong. You're a victim in this whole mess. The best thing for you is to go to your sisters where you're going to be safe. It'll be OK. I'll call you. Jack, I'd like to help you, but I mean, my goodness, I got, I got a business to run here. You're right. You're right, you do have a business to run. But you are the best tracker I've ever known. And I just thought, you know, that if you could find this guy, Thomas, that he would finger Wanda and, uh, and Burke, but, but you're right, you, you got a business to run, and uh, I understand that. Yeah, but even at that, that's a mighty big if. But an if's all I've got. Jen. I don't get it. It's like you've been reading my cards. I haven't won a game in over a month. Hey, Jack. I was reading your cards. I've been doing it all along. I thought you'd catch on by now. See where I marked them? <laughs> I take these chumps lunch money in here every day, Jack. Now I know why you're in jail. <laughs> so, how do you feel about Hector pleading guilty to raping that boy? Well, he's not too bright. I mean, we're just goofing on that kid, Jack. And he asked us to ding him. Hector's an idiot. That's how you come on that case. You haven't missed that in a long time. I told you, I'm not on that case anymore. Oh, come on, Jack. You got any suspects in here? If I were on that case, you, you'd be a pretty good suspect. And here I am trying to help you. If you were guilty, you might be trying to help yourself. I told you I had nothing to do with it. You know what the word hypothetical means? No. It's time. It's like what we're doing here. It's like, what if? And anything you say, can't be used against you in court. Understand? Warrior's well, done. Ask me some questions, aren't you? Okay, shoot. What if you did kill those kids? 
you couldn't have done it by yourself. You would have needed help. What if Wanda and Hector, what if they were with you? Wanda and Hector, on something like that, they'd puke at the side of blood, Jack. Does that answer your question? It's time. Oh, come on, Jack. Hit it. Yeah, I heard you were moving. Going to the joint, huh? And you entered a plea of guilty and the judge still gave you seven years. Man, that's got to hurt. Do you have any idea why Burke would mention your name in association with those park murders? Save it, Stuart. I am interested. Well, if you decide that you want to talk about it, have him give me a call because I want Burke. I don't want you. You tell me what you know, you'll live. You protect him, you go down with him. Think about it, man. Think about it. Jack, what's happening? Nothing much. Just trying to keep from being bored. Tell me about it, man. So how can you even talk about those murders anymore? Well, maybe I'm waiting for you to talk to me. Plan up the wrong field, Jack. Hey, Jack. Can I use that phone in your office? It's against the rules, Michael. You know that. Oh, come on, man. You know the phone in here's been broke for two days. I gotta call Stephanie. I'll try and get him to fix it. Oh, come on, man. Please. Please, Jack. It's important. Make it quick. Thanks, man. If I'm such a vicious killer, Aren't you a little scared having me in here with you? Michael, you make a move on me. And even your mama wouldn't recognize I was left. I love you, Jack. I really do. Make your call. I'm sorry I haven't been up there or anything. He just scares me, man, you know? Yeah, I understand. What'd he say about me? Not much, but I'm sure he will. He loves to talk. <laughs> yeah, mostly about himself. And the murders. He tell you he killed those kids? Did he? Hell, I don't know. He likes to talk real tough, you know. Likes to be the center of attention. But I don't know if he could actually kill somebody. How about the night of the murder? Did he come home with Martinez? He come home late? Anything? Yeah, they came in around 9. They went out again later. Well, I mean, was anything different? Anything? No. I know he was real turned on. Couldn't wait to get me in the sack. That's ugly. Yeah. He bites sometimes. 
Your lady's a hell of a cook, Jack. That's the best pumpkin pie I ever had. I'll tell her. My son Rick, he ate a whole pie. <laughs> yeah, I did. Kid named Rick. I hadn't seen him for a little while. Oh, that's probably good for him. Yeah, I understand. You probably don't think so. But I do, I understand. Stephanie, the mother? Yeah. It's before her. Well, I don't know why she doesn't call anymore. It's gotta be tough being alone. You want me to call her? Maybe I can get her to change her mind. I just don't know what she doesn't write or nothing. Michael, she's scared of you. Hey, Jack. You ever had sex? A woman who's scared of you? They'll do things they never thought they could. Those girls in the park, were they scared of you? You want me to confess, don't you? Okay, Jack. I did it. I confess. <laughs> Are you right, Thomas? I found it for you, Jack. <laughs> All right. Those kids. Yeah? Well, this girl, Wanda Monroe, I was seeing her on the side. When I broke it off, she got crazy. Told me she'd have Lindsay killed if I didn't come back to her. What'd you do? Nothing. I mean, who takes something like that serious? I didn't. Not until after those kids. Well, you know. Wanda came to see me after and told me it was a mistake that Burke screwed up. She wanted me to take off with her. I couldn't believe she was that crazy. I didn't know what to do, so I got drunk and ran. I thought maybe if I got away, Lindsay would be okay. I swear, that's the truth. It's a simple case of mistaken identity. Wanda Monroe paid Burke to kill Lindsay Thomas, he killed Jesse Sherwood. What about the other kids? Witnesses? I don't know. Wrong place at the wrong time? I don't know. Detectives Barry and Ryan are in California with a murder suspect traced to the Idlewild Inn on the night of the killings. They seem to think he's a far better suspect than your man. The fact is, you're not even on this case, Jack. I know you've heard from the PD those stories about Jack Stewart, some kind of a crazy. I know that. Actually, Jack, they did mention that you got most of your tips from some psychic. Look, Michael Burke is an animal. 
He even bites like an animal. Burke and Hector Martinez killed three children because Wanda Monroe had some kind of a thing for a married man. I can't indict on this, Jack. I'd like to talk to you again. About what? May I come in, please? Thanks. About the murders. I know Michael did it. I know Hector helped him. But I need some more information. Look, I don't know what else I could tell you. You said that the night of the murders, that Michael and Hector came home around 9 o'clock. Did you notice anything, anything at all? Look, I didn't say Hector was with him that yes, night. Yes, you did. You said Michael and Martinez came home around 9 o'clock. Yeah, but not Hector Martinez. It was his brother, Jesus. I got something new. Hector Martinez has a brother, Jesus, short, Dark hair, just like Sylvia saw. He was the third man, not one. Now we gotta find him. Bring Hector down from the joint. One of them is gonna crack. I will not go chasing down a psychic's testimony. But it was real, damn it. It's what Sylvia saw. He's the third man. Listen to yourself, Jack. You're starting to sound as nutty as they say you are. Look, you want to do some good? Stop chasing at the moon and find something that'll nail these guys once and for all. What's that? Autopsy photos. Our friend the coroner seems to have missed something. Missed what? Teeth marks on the female victims. If I get a match on Burke's teeth, bingo, I hang his ass from the highest tree. Well, you said yourself he likes to bite. I need a dental impression of his teeth, Jack. I'll arrange it. If he doesn't think I'm involved, he won't suspect a thing. Sure do appreciate the free exam, Captain. I didn't know y'all had service like this in the county jail. Nothing but the best for our boys. Right? Right. <laughs> wanted to confess to the park murder. That's what he told me when he told me to get you down here. Hey, thanks a lot. Hey, Jack. How you doing? You're doing fine, Mike. I hear you're having some trouble. You're the only friend I got left. The only one I can turn to. I understand, Mike. And you can't trust me. You want to tell me about it? About what? You mean you got me up in the middle of the night on Christmas Eve to tell me that same old crap? Maybe someday, Jack. Not today. Merry Christmas. We're not gonna have Hector back very long. It won't take long for him to find out Brooks has been talking about the murders. Unfortunately, Hector will know that kind of hearsay can't hurt him. Won't help him either. Open eight! Guess you heard. 
Buddy's been shooting his mouth off. Didn't take him long to give you up. But it did take a while for me to get him to admit that Jesus was a part of it. Jesus was in on nothing. And you don't know crap. Besides, it doesn't matter what you say in here, does it? The woman saw Michael in his little cut-off jacket. She even mentioned that you had your jeans stuffed into your boots. Michael's real stupid, huh, man? I told him somebody must have seen us. So tell me, Stuart. What happens to me if I give you what you want? I'll work with you. Sheriff. Get Cynthia Gallup over here fast. Hector is giving it up. Yes. Michael was driving around. Two beers. Went to a park. He's leaving out details. He has to know about Wanda. He's protecting Jesus. He's protecting his brother. It's still just words. Look, he said something about a car. It's at least something physical to tie to a story. I'll ask. Hector, when you were talking about Michael's car, which one was it? What? Uh, you mean which one? It was um, a Chevy pickup. Yeah, it was a pickup. We'd like to um, take you back to the park, Sheriff Hall and I. We'd like to walk you through it. You up for it? Sure. Sure, Jack. I'll do all I can now. Hector, there's a violent, evil spirit out here. You're going to help make it right again. Now, we know where it happened, son. But just to prove that you're being square with us, why don't you show us where you did it? It ain't here. I think it's a little bit down the road. What the hell are you doing, man? Well, it was dark. And we did have a lot to drink. Hey, Hector, no more games. I did that with Burke. It wasn't just you and him. It was your brother, Jesus. Jesus was with you. And that lady says she saw three of us, right? Gotta get these details, Jack. Oh, Jack! Come on, I've blown this whole thing! The man's in custody! I messed up when I asked him about the car. He knew I was faking it. So, you think bashing his head against the door it's gonna make it any better? Now calm down, get back in the car. Hey, glad you came, Jack. Told my lawyer I had to see you. About what? I found the Lord, Jack. And he gave me a sign. They're gonna find me not guilty on that sexual abuse thing. God's gonna set me free. Let the wicked forsake his way and let him return to the Lord, 
for he will have mercy upon him and abundantly pardon. What do you think of that? I think you're going to be disappointed, Michael. God is talking about pardoning sin, but when the sin's a crime, you got to pay for it. Sounds like you read the Bible a lot. I do. Yeah. I'd like to believe all that stuff about Jesus dying for our sins. But I guess you're right, Jack. It's got to be limits. Like whoever killed them kids. Think God will ever forgive them? It says in there somewhere that God can forgive even the worst sins, but there's a catch. You have to confess to all your sins. You still think I did it? Yeah, I sure do. Well, Jack, if I did kill those kids, I'd tell the jury I deserve to die. Well, I don't think you'd have to beg them too hard. Jack. Jesus has just been arrested. They're bringing him in now. Well, pal, we've got ourselves a match. The bite marks on the girls came from Burke. News like that? You've been sitting on it for 24 hours? Oh, come on, Jack. You know how swamped I've been. I'm late for court as it is. Well, damn it, be late. We've got to settle this. <clears throat> Are you going to work with me or not? Well, I guess I'm going to have to, because I'm buying your theory. Well, clearly, this is the best evidence we've got. Burke is definitely indictable. But not the Martinez boys. Hector's confession's a mess. At least it's a confession. And you know how much testimony I have that implicates Burke and Hector. All I know is that stuff comes out of county jail. There's a substantial amount of it, Cynthia. Burke's been talking his head off. I know. I know he's jail smart. He doesn't think the testimony of an inmate's worth a damn. But it's worth something. Back up. You only have one or two times that Jesus is mentioned. All right, all right. What if he fails a polygraph? He's set up for one tomorrow. Who set it up? I did. What's the problem? The problem's the polygraph. I don't want the same thing happen that happened with Monroe. Look, I trust it. If he fails the test, at least that's some indication of guilt. Jesus lived with Burke before the murders. He split right after the murders. Isn't that indication? OK, look, if Jesus fails the test, I'll go with three indictments. But I do not want to discuss the Wanda Monroe angle. Look, we throw her in, the whole case hangs on her. Oh, come on, Cynthia, don't you think it should? I mean, it seems to me those kids are dead because of Wanda. She like had that boy killed for spite. And I gave you a motive for Jesse. No, you prove the motive. And you prove mistaken identity. Otherwise, I'm not going near the grand jury with this. What about Ray Thomas's testimony? What about that? Oh, what the hell? Let's go for it. This get you off, Jack? It has its rewards. How many times are we going to do it? Many as it takes. Powell on the park case at the prison, Jack. Everybody's there. Hey, Jesus Martinez failed polygraph. He's asking Campbell for a deal. Why don't you call me on the radio? We asked to be the ones to tell you. Look, I don't want to die, man. 
You don't have to die, Jesus. But no more lies. No more half-assed versions of what happened. You want the deal? We want the truth. Okay. All right. Michael and I, we were just cruising that day. I hadn't seen my brother for weeks. So we went to get a couple of drinks, and he wanted to come with us. And, and that's when we saw those kids. What kids? The three that died. Hey, look at here. Those the ones I was talking about. Talking what? Paul and that Lindsay bitch. The one Monroe wants off. To. I think we should go over there. What do you want to go there for, Spike? For whatever. Spike? Oh, pretty good. Just hanging around. Yeah. Hey, y'all want some weed? Uh, no, no, that's all right. We got, we got beer. That's enough for now. Oh, come on, man. Let's go for a ride. Do a little smoke. Hey, we'll be right back. Hector here's got some weed from Jamaica. Come on, come on now. Let's have some fun. You know this character, Paul? Yeah. What the heck? Let's go. All right. <sighs> okay. Hey, man, you check out the lines on this one yet? Don't do that. <laughs> Let me out of the car. Well, you do have nice lungs. Now, come on. You know, like my friends or something? Let us out of the car. Hey, cut it out, man. Oh, I'm gonna cut it out, man. Huh? I'm gonna cut it out? You want me to cut out first, huh? Huh? Let us out of the car! Are you crazy? No, you're crazy! Wanted to warn you! But you wouldn't listen, bitch! about an hour there after we threw with them and you know wiping up the prints and stuff and Michael thought the thing with the sunglasses was was really cute and Ms. Monroe what was her reaction to all of this and she was real mad Michael had killed the wrong girl and Michael made her pay the money anyway which made her even more mad but there was nothing she could do about it I heard her snivel about it for weeks that was about it no further questions, Your Honor. Stand down.
Michael Burke, you have been found guilty by a jury of the crime of capital murder. I do hereby enter a judgment on the jury's verdict and impose the sentence of death. You are to be taken to the state prison at Carson and held there until the date of execution. 